uh, Senator Warner of Virginia. Oh, oh thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I got to tell you, I think um, my friend from Louisiana makes a, a, a very powerful point, and um, I agree with him. Um, was a little concerned that you cited examples of how many folks are dying in Virginia and Tennessee, and you made no analogies to Louisiana communities. Um, but it is a, we see this on the intel side. You know, a, you know, it's not exactly like they got great quality control and a few literally gram, the equivalent of grams of sugar misplaced can make the difference between a drug experience and a death. And I know other colleagues have raised, not going to be the direction I'm going to go today, but I see, as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, how often, and I don't start with a huge bias against crypto, and I think there are distributed ledger opportunities, but boy, oh boy, the amount of times that crypto is used as a way to have these illicit payments made is something we've 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 got to grapple with. So I thank my friend from Louisiana. I, I'm going to start with a slightly, maybe a little bit lighter note because I want to acknowledge Mr. DeFord and personally thank him. I know you were in Bristol, Virginia, recently for a um, a concert, and that you actually went next door to Abingdon and saw the softball team and kind of cheered them on. I'm grateful for that. And I know you recently as well were in closer to Richmond in the, in, and visited a prison in, in Chesterfield. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd love to, if you could share briefly with some of the experiences you felt, uh, particularly with the, some of that prison community in Chesterfield. Um, the HEART program, sir, is what it's called. And that sheriff down there has really got his hand on what he's doing. There's another sheriff in Flint doing great things that are similar. He is focused on re rehabbing drug addicts in jail. It's actually the only jail in the United States of America that will allow you to come in without a crime. If you are just a drug addict that wants to get off the streets and no rehab will take you and you are indigent, they will allow you to come into that jail and join the HEART program to get sober. And I think that's incredible. But, um, sir, I do that as often as I can in rehabs all across America. And the, 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 uh, the saddest part is you just see the same thing. You just see heartbreak and despair. But, yes, sir, that was incredible. And I, I appreciate you bringing that up because – that guy in Chesterfield really has his, uh, that sheriff really has his hand on the pulse of what's happening in America. Well, thank you for being willing to sh share your story. Respectfully, your not, not for a pat on the back, but we also donated our proceeds from the show that night to them. We cut the Chesterfield County Jail, the heart program, I think a $30,000 check. Well, so kudos to you. Thank you. And I'm also for maybe less uh, prevalent, but visiting the, the softball team. And, and, yeah. And oh, I was cheering for him, man. I paid for him to go to the uh, championship. I'm, I'm always going to be a cheer, cheer, cheering for him. Well, grateful for that. <laughs> I, on a more serious, well, it's all within a serious note. I'm going to turn to your colleagues up here. And, you know, I'm chairman of the Intelligence Committee. And um, one of the most important tools we have in the Intelligence Community is part of FISA called Section 702. I was, Mr. Chairman, I was recently just in Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and 702 is being used not just daily, but almost hourly in our efforts in helping our Israeli friends ferret out some of the Hamas leadership. But 702 is also been critically important in exposing the role that the Mexican drug cartels play and, frankly, in exposing the active engagement of uh, the Chinese government. Um, I know my clock's ticking here. Everybody involved in the drug battle against this killing drug realizes 702 is a critical component. It's going to expire in April. Senator Rubio and I have put forward a broad bipartisan reform bill that protects Americans' privacy, eliminates the ability to use any of this information to pursue any kind of, of criminal charge, changes the, and remember 702 is one foreigner talking to another foreigner abroad. There may be inadvertent contact with Americans. My clock's ticking down, but gentlemen, uh, Mr. Urban, if we were to lose that 702 capacity, what would that do in terms of our ability to give you the kind of enforcement tools you need against these, the bad guys? 
Senator, the short answer is, is it takes a very important tool out of our toolbox in order to be able to combat uh, this crisis. Mr. Irwin? Yeah, I second that. It's We're already at a disadvantage targeting the t cartels in terms of gaining intelligence, so that would put us at a greater disadvantage. You need that tool. And I can just assure you, you know, we are open for reform, but the idea that you have to have a search warrant before you act on any of this information, when frankly, the vast majority of inadvertent American contact comes in the form of victim notification. who have been victim of, of cyber attack and others from foreign entities. So again, those uh, of our colleagues that uh, uh, that ha see otherwise, I hope they'll give me a chance to make a case of how important this critical tool is, not only in terms of the president's daily brief, in terms of conflicts around the world, but also in terms of giving our law enforcement the tools they need to uh, go against the bad guys in fentanyl. And Mr. DeFord, thank you again for what you've done in Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Uh, Senator Haggerty, if 